How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? It's uh, Seth Briefs today, and of course that was fully the trading dog in the background. Uh, we are going to present what we think may be the beginning of the uh, sell-off, take a look at a little history, take a look at what's going on in the markets, and recommend that we be long gold and silver, short the indexes. Let's, uh, let's have a look around. Most of the world's major indexes, these are all four-hour charts, except the Tata Wool, which is holding nice and steady, and, of course, the dollar index, which is going into the toilet rapidly. The dollar is weakening, and that's what the dollar index indicates. But the CAC, the NASDAQ, the uh, Euro 50, the DAX, the Milan, the Nikkei, of course, contrarily to the, in the last eight hours, takes a jump up, but that's leave that to the Nikkei. Um, the uh, Australian 200, Johannesburg actually holding fairly steady. The uh, Amsterdam down precipitously, and that's for more than two hours here. This goes back a while. The uh, S&P, the FTSE, the Dow, they're all down. And this is, of course, in the, and, but I, I do want to put it in perspective. So let's see if we can get, let's get a perspective on the most representative. This is a four-hour chart of the uh, S&P 500. Now, this is the beginning of the pandemic. This is uh, the middle of... Uh, Getting it into Mar end of May starts to come up. It's it's broken a long, a slightly above its uh, highs before the pandemic, but um, you know, and these are just lower lows. These aren't really, you know, we've seen these lows before in the middle of two weeks ago, so it's no big deal here. But what I want to point out is um, the following, um, and this is a this is a chart of the Dow uh, after the nineteen twenty nine crash. This is November twenty nine. This is the end of, uh, well, let's, here's the end of the fr that quarter of, uh, fr last quarter of 29. It goes up, uh, that Q2 and Q in 30, and then it, uh, and then that's it. Now, it doesn't nearly peak. Well, you know what? We, t we took a look at the S&P. Let's take a look at the Dow. That's this, the more, yeah, that's the better parallel. Because the Dow um, doesn't have that high, as much high technology uh, people making big time money out of the pandemic crowd. It's got a more industrial or more financial orientation and so it hasn't reached uh, it's about 70 percent of its pre-pandemic level which again parallels to not exactly it doesn't seem to reach about 250 350 that would be uh, 300 just about next to 50 percent level so it's 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 the same same general pattern not the same orders of magnitude but then it's it's ah, and this goes down until well into 33 when the new deal finally starts to kick in but <clears throat> Having said that, and having drawn the parallels, the reason we draw the parallels to, and remember, so if that were, if we were paralleling that to this, if we're paralleling this chart to um, to the crash of 1929, it would turn down significantly for a long way now at this point. So the question is not even how long. The question is, is it going to turn down at all? Um, it's hard to know. You can see that this. This run-up has been on very low volume compared to this run-up. So it looks like a lot of the money already has gotten out. Is that smart money? I'll leave that to, to history to decide. But a lot of the money is clearly left, and it usually is the smart money. Um, this is in the face of really horrible um, pandemic statistics. It's getting worse. There's no talk really of a... Well, there's no sight of a of a, a vaccine anywhere on the horizon for a year, year and a half, something like that. It's bad news. Now, again, when you put these drawdowns of the uh, indexes into perspective, now take a look at the Nasdaq. That's the one that's been the most. Um, yeah, the Nasdaq really didn't suffer that much at all, even during the pandemic. Here is the pandemic. Um, where's the big fall in the pandemic? June. Oh, I'm looking at a four-hour chip. Sorry. Yeah, here it is, right there. So it's way above the uh, pandemic level, but that's because the NASDAQ is, is, is endowed with companies that are making a fortune out of this pandemic. But the other thing we need to couple this with is, and uh, I want to keep this short today, is the precipitous and un really, really sharp rise in gold and silver. Take a look at gold. Its previous high was 1911, set uh, back in t 1920, excuse me, 1922 to be precise, which is right around here, um, set in uh, 2011, 2011. It's well over that. It's going to stay 1949. We could easily see 1950, 1975 this week, 
because the volumes, and let's drill down a little bit, put this in the days, the volumes driving this up, well, they're falling a little bit here, but you see, this was the sell-off, this was the buy-in, and then, from here up, the volumes are pretty steady. Now, it's dropped off at this last tail, but so maybe it'll come back to stabilize somewhere at 1750, 1800. But 1800 is still above, you know, the 16, 1700 level, which, where it was for months. And so there was a lot of back and forth, and finally the bulls won out. So it, it's taken a step up. And if that weren't good enough for you, this is really, in many ways, more exciting is the um, silver price, because that's up steeply about, I don't know, th what is that? I figured it out this morning, 35.65%. In the, in the last, uh, you know, three, four weeks of trading. It's a tremendous gain, ladies and gentlemen. So what I will end up, uh, again, by just giving you the quick summary here. Gold and silver are up uh, strongly uh, on, on what is likely to be a beginning of another sell-off in the markets. The, the markets in general are selling off slightly. I mean, they're not, it's not nothing, you know, it, it hasn't begun yet. This is no confirmation yet. But the sell-offs that we see, again, we'll take a look at the Dow. Um, we're right here. The, the news is getting worse and worse and worse. Earnings reports are not doing well. We've crossed over the 20-day. Uh, this is a, this is a, a, a uh, let's go to a daily, just to make it more relevant. We've, well, we're still, we're just hitting the 20-day moving average headed down toward the uh, 50 and 200, which coincidentally are simultaneous. Um, hard to say, but this covered, uh, and this continuing rise on the continually lower volume, I think might be, coupled with the gold and silver price, might be indicative of a sell-off. So we're recommending to keep plenty of money in cash. If the sell-off really starts to get out, we're going to get out in big time. Um, gold and silver are buys, are long-term buys. And, um, you know, this is a good market. Things are looking good. You know, let's see if we can make some money today. That's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. We're all wishing you here the ability to trade with confidence. Bye-bye for now.